yeah Up on a mountain Arizona thistle and uh, has a general rule. Cut off the top right by the flower. This part of the thistle is like a vegetable here. And uh, so like you can strip off the outer, you know, like that stuff on the outside. And uh, it's great for grazing or for throwing in a in a pot and boiling up or whatever you know the younger it is the newer it is the easier it is to eat as it gets bigger you know down here it gets really stringy and tough so and over this one's already getting too tough <laughs> probably this is a better piece here um, over that direction there's some uh, New Mexico locusts that I'll show you which the uh, natives in New Mexico used to eat as part of their diet. Honeysuckle like ish. Not bad. All right, and so as you're hiking along, foraging the, the ends of these, uh, of uh, they'll just be spruce, you know, and most trees, the, the brand new, new growth that's growing out on the very ends of the branches is edible. And so you can just throw that in with whatever you're cooking up, or you can just eat it raw as you're hiking. It has a little bit of a tangy tart, like a lemon taste, plus a, a distinct pine needle flavor. <laughs> it is definitely, you know, like a, well, you know, fir tree flavor or pine flavor, sort of like the sap a little bit, you know. There's a little bit of pitch in it, actually. Um, I don't know if it kind of glues it together. Yeah, I can feel it on my fingers. Yeah, so it, it's a little bit pitchy, but it's really not bad. It's like everything else out here, you're not used to eating this stuff, so you kind of have to break yourself into it gradually till you're used to the flavors and whatever. This is uh, Moline. It just later on, of course, you're going to get a stalk that's going to grow up, and then it's got the yellow flowers on the stalk, and uh, it's one of the most common medicinal plants that grows all over America, anywhere you know, up in these higher elevations. Uh, the thing about it, the only part of it that's really food is this part right here that I'm peeling away. This, you know, the large part of the stems. 
uh, if you pull these uh, leaves off and just kind of scrape those hairy things off, this is really good when you boil it up in a pot. Uh, and so I'd suggest, you know, you throw it into something else like curly dock goes really well or wild rhubarb. Um, this, uh, the plant itself has so many medicinal uses. This is a compress if you break these leaves up and get them kind of goopy and soggy and then you like if you have a, a like a deep cut or something like that and uh, you use this to compress it on there and then wrap over it and not only does it absorb the blood but it also has healing properties in it to help heal the you know the wound uh, and then the top of the flower stalks like the first two inches or so you can cut those off and use those actually the Native Americans used to smoke them for uh, respiratory problems like a dry cough and stuff like that but it has a lot more uses it's one of those things you can just look it up online or something and look up Moline and, and find out what you can do with it right, uh, we are at seven about 7,000 feet right now uh, Bradshaw Mountains Bradshaw Mountains near Prescott and uh, we are carrying on. So here we have a, an undetermined as of yet grass species and uh, you can see just the top is full of seeds and their husks um, and actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna when we get back attempt to find out and then we'll hopefully at the beginning of this video we have some text as to what the grass species is but uh, yeah, essentially you just break these off and uh, if I can get to one of the seeds here there we go, wait a second and of course this is somewhat laborious but the point being that this is like any kind of wheat there it is right there And so, it just has kind of a, you know, just an oaty kind of flavor to it. And obviously, this would be quite a task getting, you know, gathering all this up. Obviously, you'd have to grind it up, you know, make some kind of flour out of it. But, you know, it's certainly doable. All right, stinging nettle, of course, uh, people have been eating it all over the world for years and years and years. It's one of the most disgusting food plants that just grows everywhere. Um, but uh, the best part of it, the only part of it I would eat, with the very small leaves on the top, um, they're not too bad. Um, they're tolerable. They still have that disgusting nettle taste. You can boil them, uh, fry them, whatever. Um, the one part that I think is actually really good though is the roots of young plants just like these. So I'm going to try to get a root and uh, actually it, uh, some Native Americans used to use the root, chew the root for, uh, for hair loss. It was a treatment for you know, baldness or whatever. So uh, I'm going to grab a root and see what that looks like. This is what I was looking for. So I killed the poor plant. <laughs> okay. All right. So, oops. This is kind of like eating a carrot. Um, I would recommend washing it first. I don't have a creek or anything here to wash it off in. Bugs are bothering me now. Um, <clears throat> just because, you know, it's nicer to eat it without all the dirt all over it. Now, here's what I'm looking at. This is good stuff. Yeah. It's sort of, like I said, like eating a carrot. It has a really nice flavor. I like it. It's yummy. And so wherever there's needle uh, nettles everywhere, if, like me, you can't stand the taste of the leaves, go for the roots. Teepee. And uh, 
Senor, <laughs> what do you have to say about I a teepee in Prescott? <laughs> I was just laughing because all these, you know, people who think, you know, they're like playing Indian. Oh, let's have, you know, let's be Indians and let's have a teepee. And, you know, teepees are Plains Indians. The natives who lived up here never used teepees. <laughs> you know, I just think it's funny. <laughs> but still, it is cool. I will say that. Check that out. What a place for a TP. All right, so all this lupine here. This is really cool because you can see, now first of all, there's thousands of different species of lupine and they you know, different species may have a different level of toxicity or something, but the Yavapai uh, Indians in, you know, who lived in the Bradshaw Mountains and around Prescott used to eat the lupine. There's several different species in this area. So this has been an experiment of mine, not with this particular species, with the bigger one. Um, so here's the thing. The pods, well, first of all, the flowers become the pods. So where, where the pods are coming out, there used to be flowers there. Um, so when the pods get larger, these are beginning to ripen and, and there's different, uh, there's different, uh, during different seasons, these are edible in different ways. This is sort of like a string bean. And if you boil this up just like this, first of all, um, these beans are edible, sort of like peas, um, and you can boil them or, you know, I eat them raw, whatever, they're really good. If you boil this, you can actually scrape the, the skin off of this pod with your teeth, and that's pretty good too. Uh, the pod itself is pretty tough, but the skin on the outside and the beans on the inside are edible. Then what'll happen later, if you just left these on, on the plants, the the pods will dry out and at that point you can split them open and you'll have beans that are a lot like uh, you know your your the kind of beans you buy from a grocery store you soak them overnight you know and they'll puff up a little bit and change color and at that point um, then you can eat them like beans so I've been playing around with that for the last year in fact I've got some stored because I wanted to store them for the winter to see how well they store and uh, and they're still good now and you know summers here <laughs> you know so they stored through the winter so it would be a, an excellent crop uh, later on when they dry out for uh, for winter storage for food you know when, when there's nothing else out here that's growing there we go. Yep, I got it so we got two Nice little seeds right there. Yep. See those? Excessively tender. Not bad. A little bit of bitterness, but like you said, soaking them will remove some of that, right? Yep. The other thing I noticed here is like we've got a whole whole farm it seems like yeah I mean this is a nice field right here this is just growing everywhere and uh, there's a larger species of lupine that I've been playing with where the leaves are edible you can just uh, boil them up like spinach or something you know yeah. and uh, and they it grows along the creek beds and stuff so it's a pretty common plant here in the Bradshaw mountains on these on this Moline leaf 
are the part that, as I said, is edible. And you can see what you do is you take that stem and you just have to scrape the <laughs> whoops, I'm cutting it. <laughs> scrape the hairy stuff off there because that just tastes like you're eating a, it, it's like, like eating a cotton ball or something. Um, if you scrape the hairy stuff off, then what you have left, after it's all scraped off, is something that actually has the texture of celery. And, you know, a taste that's not too different from celery. Uh, and like I said before, it's really good boiled, but I'm gonna eat this one raw. Raw piece of celery. So it's got it's got its own distinct flavor. <clears throat> I got a hairy thing in my mouth. <laughs> a little bit of bitterness, you know. On the road to freedom. Uh, about 15 miles north of Prescott, Arizona. Our campsite is right up here. About a good, oh, two, three hundred yards. Completely out of sight, and it is a little bit of a hard time getting up there, but that's okay. We got an abandoned mine over here. We're gonna hike that at some point, but we basically came back to this direction. Uh, straight downhill on the way back and supposedly we have a running water creek down here it actually starts a little farther um, farther that way okay it's like right here it's dry but it just comes right out of the ground oh, okay. basically right below the camp it just comes right out of the ground cool it comes a creek so around this bend and then there's going to be a spot where we just go straight up campsites up there camp base camp lionheart 